Are you ready for another exciting installment of everyone's favorite podcast segment, Funny Versus, starring the incomparable, the illustrious, the star-studded Bunny Williams? Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you revved up? Are you primed? Are you optimist primed? Are you ready, Bunny? I am goddamn ready. Okay. Then without any further ado... It's time once again for Bunny Versus, and now here is your host, Bunny Williams. Take it away, Bunny. Uh, so we have the Filipino flag. Okay. In honoring all of the new members that we've had join the Facebook group, not all from the Philippines. Australia was well represented. Canada was well represented as well. But predominantly from the Filipino Philippines. Hey, everybody! I think a large portion of that is just uh, the probably fake Spider-Man No Way Home trailer that I posted. Y- yeah, probably. But still, like, why was that a hit in the Philippines? I don't know. You know, like, like. And, and it's it, it's nothing to do with the Philippines itself. It's just really odd when you get an influx all from one specific area. Yeah. Just, just like the times we were hot in Bulgaria for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, just, just Filipinos just really get us, you know? Yeah. That's what I like to think. Yeah. So this is for all of our uh, new Filipino members and friends. Please be active in the group. Say something. Introduce yourself. Hi. How are you? We love you. Yeah. Uh, You're here. The introduction for Dabney is almost finished. It is... uh, I, I, I have it down now, bro- broken down. Like, all the animation is done, and the first render is done. Then I have to chop that up into the camera shots to do the additional effects. Yeah. So I have 13 additionals. I have 13 shots. I have to do that part. Then the introduction for the first episode will be done. Nice. And then I have written many, many more. I, I've written, like, another four episodes. Very cool. Very now, cool. Now, what I need, and I keep meaning to post about it in the group, is I need very short, really, really fucked up videos. Like, 30 seconds or less. Because I'm planning on ending it ending the break with basically a moment of zen like the Daily Show used to do but a moment of what the fuck is this yeah I have two so far to give you an idea of the kind of thing I'm looking for I have the Japanese girl playing the flute with her vagina Remember that one? Mm -hmm. And I have master martial artists getting kicked in the nuts over and over and over and over again. And hitting their nuts with bricks. You know what you should put? Other items. You know what you should put? You should put the power team. Power team? Who are they? They were those they were those bodybuilders from like the eighties on on UHF Christian stations that would like they would Send lift, me a clip! They would lift five thousand pounds and then they'd rip a hundred phone books in half and then they'd talk about how their power comes from Jesus. They were the power team. I they were everywhere back in the day. That that sounds like it has potential, uh, and, hold and on. okay, oh, hold on a nobody second. has to send or nobody has to send like a thirty second clip. You don't have to be looking for thirty second clips, but if you're watching something and you see thirty seconds of something that's really fucked up, 
Yeah. Let me know. I'll clip it out. Okay. So anyway. Uh, now, hold on, Bunny, because uh, my high schooler is here right next to the camera. They're coming in hot, and they've got something. Uh, oh. Yeah. What video? I don't remember. I feel like I've said that a lot. Hello Kitty doesn't have a mouth. Yes, I vaguely remember that. It's 44 seconds? Okay. I vaguely remember that. It was some really creepy video that they were obsessed with and would watch it over and over again and finally I had to put my foot down. Stop watching the creepy Hello Kitty video. That's a good one. Uh, I would like to just point out that I have a high schooler who used to go by another name, but they don't go by that name anymore. You can either call them Malachite or by their nickname Gizmo. Okay. I I have shortened Malachite to Mal, as in Mal Reynolds from Firefly. So I try and go by Mal. My two youngest really like the name Gizmo. So Whose arms are detachable? Go figure. So so, who who is this now? Uh, come here. This Malachite Mal. or Gizmo? Okay, cool. Mal. They also go by Gizmo. That's the nickname. But Malachite is the name, or Mal for short. M Mal is also acceptable. Yes. Oh, cool. So that's Mal. I keep accidentally dead naming them, but that's just a uh, force of habit, and I'm really... We are all trying really hard. We're working on it. Yes. So, so there's that. Just wanted to point that out while I had Mal here. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit high right now. I'm eating chips like a real Look, professional podcast. What did Malachi think of Suicide Squad? Did you see the... Mal, Mal, Mal saw some of the Suicide Squad, but didn't see all of the Suicide Squad. Oh, okay. But um, Mal just said that they're a big fan of the Polka Dot Man. Who isn't? Yes. I relate to the Polka Dot Man's issues with his mom. Yes that I could never murder someone, but if I had to murder someone, I can think of one very easy way that I could <laughs> go about murdering someone. It's not my mom, but I get it, Polka Dot yeah. Man. I get it. Same. It's got the same vibe. Yeah. So, so okay, so Dabney is going to ha I, you know, and I'm sure I probably mentioned this before, so, you know, deal with it. Dabney's going to start with an introduction, okay? And I've decided what I'm going to do. It's this Dabney's, Dabney's Dystopian Dreams. Okay. And then it's going to say featuring, and it's either going to be Tim Caldwell or Liz a Day. Okay. So then Dabney does the introduction, and then we will have videos. That first se section is, most, is going to be either you or us, things we've done together. Okay. Like QAnon Karen, like OK Ice Cream, or any of the other bits you've done yourself. Or, yes, or QAnon Karen, uh, Hot Chicks in Glasses, Evil Henchman Warehouse, that kind of stuff. And then Dabney will come back with basically the asshole of the month, like Hustler used to do. The yeah. bit itself doesn't really have a title. Its working title is Fuck That Guy. Uh, so far I have got got done Andy Warhol Lindsey Graham and Elon Musk you're going to be talking about uh, Andy Warhol for a little bit uh, in Act 3 yeah 
Uh -huh. Well, these are short. The, I, this introduction has gone long. The regular introductions, I only want those to be two minutes. And then, fuck that guy is going to be one minute. And then the what the fuck is going to be like pfft, fucking seconds. Maybe it's going to be a minute. Dabney's going to say, we're going to roll out of either Tim or Liz's video. Dabney's going to say, like, so until next week, what the fuck is this? Or something like that. And a little 30 second video, and it's done. Okay. Along with, with little filler bits to fill in gaps. You know. Yeah. Thing, you know, stupid little shit I have laying around. That kind yeah. of thing. So that's going. what's going on with him. Suddenly he's been going on, like, a lot quicker. Uh, the animation leaves a lot to be desired, but fuck it, that's the whole goddamn point. Yeah. You know? That's cool. And how have you been, sir? Uh, good, good, uh... It was nice to have a break after the hideous summer that we had watching uh, the worst movies of all time. Yes. Uh, the time that I spent not doing the podcast it has really been just about uh, getting used to the new schedule that I live by. Because, you know, I wake up uh, at the crack of dawn yeah. and start getting Eleanor ready for school because Eleanor... My five-year-old is doing in-person school, so I get them ready for school, and then I drop them off at their kindergarten, and then I come home and work on getting Mal ready for high school, and then Mal heads off, and then it's time to set up <coughs> school for Maxwell, who's doing virtual school at home. And then we get them all set up for virtual school, and then we do virtual school, and then he takes a break, and I make lunch for him, and then he has a little bit of time on his own, and then we come back to school, and then when he's finally done with school, we pick up Eleanor from school, I bring them home, we spend a little bit of time here at home, and then after that, either Mal comes home on the school bus, or I have to pick Mal up, because Mal's at like a club meeting or something, and then we come home, and then uh, three days out of the week, uh, four days out of the week, I have to give them baths or give them showers, get them all washed up, and then it's time to, to make dinner, and it's, it's a whole routine. I have a job that starts at 6 a.m. and ends at around 10 p.m., Yeah. and it's quite difficult, and so uh, I've just been trying to get into my routine. I have very busy days. Uh, I did get some free merch from the people at OK Nice Cream. They sent my wife and I these shirts. Nice. At OKNiceCream.com, and I'm really excited because they have two different versions of this shirt. The shirt that just has the logo, and a shirt that has the logo and the contains THC warning that they have on all of the products here in Oklahoma. And when they said that they were going to send uh, me a free shirt, I said, can you make sure it has the contains THC? So they sent us two shirts, one for my wife and one for me. And so I'm really excited about that. We got, the, oh, and these really nice bracelets. So really happy about that. There's a story yeah. I wanted to say, because I don't have that much to say this week. So I have uh, just a story that I wanted to mention. I was considering turning it into a shaft, but it was too short. So I thought, you know, I'll just do it really quick. I'll just break it down to the basics for Bunny Versus. So you know Willem Dafoe, yeah? Yeah. Uh, the Green Goblin and a member of uh, Team Zisu is yes. the way that I know him. And he also hangs out in a lighthouse and gets drunk and slow dances with another yes, man. Yes, he does. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I can love Willem. I, I'm, ho I'm hoping that one day he becomes so successful in Hollywood that he can finally afford the I and become William Dafoe. That would be nice. It would be. 
Well, that would be nice. That would be better than the star on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. But until then, he's just Willem. So he yeah. signed up to be in a Lars von Trier movie. Yeah. He was in. He signed up to be in the movie Antichrist, and because Willem Dafoe is a professional, he agreed to be naked in the movie, full naked, including dongle, full total uh, buck ass yes. naked. So he, and it he, happens. It happens early on, fairly early on in the film. Yeah. Because so the film, he, the film was boring as shit. Yeah. And I, I literally couldn't go very far with this movie. I saw his cock in the shower, and I was like, well, you know, here's it's not getting any better than this. Here's <laughs> the thing: you did not see his cock in the shower. So no. Let's talk about yeah. So let's talk about that. That was a stunt cock. So let's talk about that. So uh, Willem Dafoe agrees to be fully naked in Lars von Trier's Antichrist. Oh, also FYI, there's going to be possible dog noises throughout this entire episode. We're we're uh, dog sitting Auntie Lawrence's dog while she goes on a road trip to Texas just so she can eat at a Joe's Crab Shack. Oh, my Ugh. God. But anyway, uh, so it's the day of filming Willem Dafoe's naked scene, so he gets naked, fully naked, showing his penis, and, and they take a couple of takes, and Willem Dafoe feels good about it, and that's the end of the day. So the cast, the producers, and, and second assistant, whatever the fuck, they head to the theater to watch the dailies, and everyone's confused. They're like, wait, what, what are we watching here? Is this a joke? Is this a, is, is this a prank? Like, I'm so confused at what I'm seeing here. Is this, is this right? Is this what you wanted? As it turns out, Willem Dafoe has a fucking huge one. Yeah. Huge. King Kong. Fucking, I don't know if Willem Dafoe's his real name, but his real name might be John Frickin' Holmes. Really? Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm talking, is his name Mr. Incredible? Because something stretched out. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It was so big that everyone who saw the footage was confused and distracted. So much so that they hired a... A, a second actor to be the stunt penis to be naked for Willem Dafoe because that's how huge he was. Okay, I think this demands a pause. A pause and a breath to really try to compens co comprehend what it is that you've just said. I know it's a shocker. It's a shocker. So first, you got to figure Lars von Tears comes to William Defoe and says, "Hey, I want you to be naked in my movie." And okay. Then Willem Dafoe, and then Willem Defoe says, "You had me at I want you to be." Yeah, I, I was like, "Do you, you have no idea how many years I've been?" waiting to be asked. Yeah. Because he already knows he's got the enormous schlong. It has always been like a sub goal in his career yep. to get his enormous cock on film. Yeah. And here it is. And yeah, then um, the cherry on the cake is that you are, your cock is so huge Massive. that it really cannot be taken seriously on film. It looks fucking comical. So we they need to get... They hired a stunt penis because they needed Willem Dafoe's penis to be smaller for the film. So we need to get a stunt cock somebody with a drastically smaller cock to stand in 
for William Defoe's massive penis. I mean, I mean, if you are William Defoe, you've just got to be like, oh fuck yeah. <laughs> that had to be a that had to be a, dip, a difficult casting call to write. Yeah. Wanted penis smaller than William Defoe. Like, well, I, I was thinking that. like. Bella Lug- I was thinking like Bella Lugosi's penis in F- Kung Fu Manchu. <laughs> well, it, it, on the positive side, if they do ever decide to make a biopic of Milton Berle, yes, we've got the perfect actor. Because I don't know if you know this, but Milton <coughs> Berle. Oh yes, we've we've talked about Milton Berle's penis okay. before. Okay. So, uh, oh, we've already got uh, the Milton Berle movie cast. Willem we've Defoe. we've covered Milton Berle's penis. Okay, good. And now, and we've, now we've covered, covered William Defoe's penis. Now we've covered Willem Defoe's penis. Yeah. So that's a positive. So that's me. How are you doing, Bunny? Okay, let me just because like Jeannie only caught bits and pieces of it. Yeah. William Defoe's penis. Yeah. It was so big. Bigger than uh, Liam Neeson's? I, I don't know. We have to find out in comparison to Liam Neeson. But he, his penis was cut out of a nude scene <laughs> so that they can get a smaller penis because his penis is, like, comically large. Are you sure that's the reason? Oh, yeah. It oh, wasn't because yeah. it's, like, weirdly misshapen or... Well, just no, the signs of it is weird. It so, big. yes, technically, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> no, but how do you know that's why? You mean it was twisted into a French poodle? Right. Like a boy That's animal. possible. And frankly, I would like to see that if if William Defoe's penis was, in fact, twisted into a, into a balloon poodle. Um, I, I assume you haven't seen the stage show Puppetry of the Penis before. I have well, not seen Puppetry of the Penis. I, I have heard okay. about it before. It is a thing. Yeah. I have been so, looking for a clip from Fernwood Tonight, and I hated Fernwood to- Tonight. Fernwood I really did tonight. not like it. But God damn. I caught one. Because like, it was a weird little like variety show kind of a thing. But it was these two bald guys in tuxedos in front of a grand piano. And they both dropped their pants and raised their hands over their heads and started playing chopsticks. Nice. I thought that was the, like the funniest fucking thing ever. And I haven't found that clip. I would use that as a what the fuck. But anyway, so I, I, I kind of just wanted to chew over the Marvel movies a bit and what's going on and what are you excited about and what do you think and what kind of theories do you have and let's make fun of other people's theories, that kind of my stuff. Theory, my theory of the MCU right now is that everyone is Mephisto. Everyone is what? Everyone is Mephisto. Everyone is Mephisto. That's, that's yes. My, I, I, I kind of get that feeling, too. It's like, oh, come on. The plants are Mephisto. I saw a scene of Shang-Chi where you saw four clouds. Four, like the Fantastic Four, Reed Richards confirmed. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it is Doctor Strange, but I really don't think it's Mephisto. Yeah. You know? It's, it's, well, it could always be a Doctor Strange from the multiverse somewhere, since we're doing the whole multiverse thing, but Wong would not come off with that kind of attitude to Doctor Strange, you know? He may warn him sternly about doing something, but in the trailer, Wong was like actively acting, like, a- actively angry, like, "Don't you fucking dare!" 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think he would ever refer to the Sorcerer Supreme like that. I also don't think that he's going to come off like that with any kind of entity who could maybe turn around and just kick his ass. You know, like, he's not going to mouth off to Mephisto that way either. Yeah. You know? Maybe somebody, like, on the Loki level. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, in fact, maybe it is Loki. I would like to see them tie together the split in the mo- in the multiverse in Loki and now the split in the multiverse in Doctor Strange and tie that with the end scene from WandaVision. So the so so the split in the multiverse is not necessarily any one of these things. But it's all three of these things that converged at the same time. And let's not forget that there, the bad guy from the end of the first Doctor Strange movie is still fucking out there. Baron Mordor? Yeah. Oh, I wish he would get... I love that guy. I wish he would get a pronounceable name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Like, I take note of his name all the time, but, like, I cannot... Uh. Yeah. It's going to take a while. Hey, Taika Waititi took a while. You know, I mean, took a while. but it was worth it. I'll get there. But God, I loved him from, from Serenity. Mm-hmm. You know? And I've seen him pop up in a couple of other things. I can't recall offhand everything. Was he in The Martian? Shit, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, but anyway, yeah, uh, and in fact, that's actually pretty plausible if you think about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, a character like, like Baron Mordo has the ability to, to, just like suck up to Doctor Strange a bit and suck up to Wong Wong a little bit and they would be he would be brought back into the fold you know you could just see that happening you know we've all studied under the ancient that kind of a thing so I could see him getting his and, and you know Wong is reluctant but he would go on with it go along with it, you know, yeah, yeah, I I think that's a good choice. Yeah. Same. Now, does Wong go out of the portal and, like, step directly into Shang-Chi? I think so. Because that's a cool concept. Yeah. Where you know right there... This happened, and then he walked through the portal, and now he's now now watch this movie. <laughs> yeah. I like the fact that someone pointed out, someone on Twitter pointed out that Lil Nas X survived the snap. Yeah. And his his reasoning behind that was there's a scene in Shang Chi where uh, Shang Chi and Aquafina are at a karaoke bar and they sing Old Town Road, which came out at this year, and this one specific year was in the MCU during the five-year period where everyone was snapped. So technically, this means that Lil Nas X survived the snap and released Old Town Road during the snap. And so there are a lot of people out there, apparently, this is a thing of people trying to use the MCU movies to make a definitive list of the people who survived and who didn't survive. And so some random guy saw Shang-Chi and said, okay, so uh, I noticed in one part that this song appeared, and so this means that Lil Nas X survived the snap. 
And so Lil Nas X retweeted this one guy's tweet. And I thought that that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, 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 I really, like, have come to respect... I mean, I don't know music. I don't know fucking actors anymore, really. You know? Yeah. And forget sports figures. So... But I, I really like who Little Nas X has become. You know, yeah. just I, I respect somebody who wants to go out there and is just going to be like, I, I'm just as gay as I want to be. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, I love that. You know, and he's really getting in some decent ass shots. Yeah, he is. You know. But yeah. anyway. So he survived the snap. Yeah, he survived the snap. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to... Uh, I'm interested in Shang-Chi. I'm not really terribly interested in martial arts movies. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh... So I'm it's, giving it. I, I mean, I'm definitely going to see it, but I'm going to. Uh, I, I have my reservations. Yeah. You know, and Marvel, you've been kind of slipping. Well, here's a little uh, spoiler for anyone uh, who uh, doesn't want a specific character reveal in Shang Chi to be spoiled. You should cover your ears and maybe not listen to the podcast for the next minute or two. But um, my favorite part about Shang-Chi and something that really should get more people to go see the movie is that one specific character appears, and it's quite shocking when it happens. You could say, you'll never see him coming. Yeah. And I got really excited when I saw that actor appear on screen. I was like, yes! Yes! I was I was really excited, and he's a big part of the movie. He's in like yeah. 60% of the movie. It's not like a cameo, because, oh, I was in another Marvel movie. Remember that? No, he's a big part of the plot, and it's really exciting. I, I, I think I know who you're talking about, and, and that yeah. is interesting. Again, I'm, I'm going to see it. I'm just, I'm just like, feeling reserved, like, like... I, I, I was getting really pretty excited leading up to Black Widow. You know, yep. it was like, oh, Taskmaster looks like kind of a cool villain, you know, sort of. And, and even from the trailers, it looked like it, Taskmaster was on the side. Oh, you know? Taskmaster! But it was like, yeah, it it sucked. But it was like, cool. We're gonna see the Russian heroes. We're gonna see the Russian Avengers, basically. Yeah. You know, and that's gonna be fun. And it was like. And even watching the trailers, the trailers looked like a lot of fun. And they put in the, all the nice clippy lines, but it's like the best bits were in the fucking trailer. Yeah. Like when your girlfriend was saying, you do superhero landing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That was fucking awesome. You know? I felt that the best part of Black Widow happened at the end of credits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so like, that was the best part. So, like, I, I feel the same way towards Shang Chi right now, where it's like, yeah, that looks really good, man. But like, you just hurt me. You just, you know, you just hurt me. <laughs> you know. Well, you have I to will build say... back some faith here. Uh, the the scenes with Wong fighting a uh, abomination. abominable abomination. Yeah. That. Yeah. That looks great. That looks like that a lot of fun. Is, that whole well, sequence is fun. There is a mid credit sequence in Shang-Chi. Uh, oh, very light spoilers. Um, yeah. That features some pretty major MCU heroes. Yeah. So this move... So Shang-Chi ties more into the general MCU than Black Widow did, but times a thousand. Okay, now... now I have a question here. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and it's probably because I have not been keeping track of box office throughout the pandemic. Okay. But, like, I was seeing Sung chi being hailed as, like, this massive hit. And the awesome Labor Day weekend box office. And what I saw announced was uh, 83 million. Yep. That sounds fucking awful. It's... It, you can't tell me they didn't spend more than 83 no, million. No, 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 no. It, that's the thing, is that that's a big hit in the pandemic. That's, that's, that's what, like, I was thinking... Yeah, but, but like I said, like, that's I mean that's why I started with I haven't been tracking box office throughout the pandemic. Yeah. You know? Because I, I kind of figured that that was playing into it. That's fucking awful. Yeah. No. Pre, pre-pandemic, that number would have been a huge bump. But in the pandemic, those numbers are massive. Yeah, the Suicide Squad... This week's movie, great movie, absolutely love it. It did shit in the box office, but it was like wow. one of the, I think like the second highest. Well, I'm sorry, we movie. just had a massive bolt of lightning out there. Really? That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <Cool. laughs> it's hot as fuck outside where I'm at. But uh, the Suicide Squad, it did horrible in the box office, but it was, like, one of the highest streamed movies of the entire year. So I think that that alone means that they'll make a sequel. Yeah. And if if that's the box, then fucking... I'm Team Scar Joe on this one. You know what I mean? Like, Uh if that's the box office... And you were promising a big fucking release for Black Widow. You have totally ripped her off. Yeah. You know? Again, frankly, if you ask me, she she should have had a movie way, way fucking before this. She should have been an action figure. A lot of other things. They should have given her a movie right after the second fucking Avengers movie, which went into her backstory in the Red Room. Yeah. And, oh, I can't have a child because I, you know, they ripped my uterus out in the Red Room where I was trained in secret in Russia. And it's like, boom, right there you released the Black Widow movie. You don't wait until now. Yeah. Plus, I can't get over the fact that I think Shang-Chi is the 25th or the 26th movie in the MCU. And still, I go to the movies on opening day of this brand new Marvel movie, and still, 60% of the theater is leaving once the credits start. Like, how do you not fucking know this by now? That there is shit still in the movie. Yeah. This is me right the fuck up. Fuck is wrong with you. God damn. Yeah. So it was, was and and okay, so now something else I'm really wondering about. Hmm. All right, there. Okay. No, the neighbors, somebody's knocking on the neighbor's door and it's so close to ours, it's hard to distinguish. Gotcha. But anyway, uh... So, is Brie Larson okay? Is she okay? I mean, I... The Marvels? Is the next... Really? What are we doing here? I'm not sure. Oh, because Monica Rambo becomes Miss Marvel. Yeah. So there's a second Captain Marvel, and Monica Rambo is the little girl from the Captain the, Marvel. The movie, first Captain Marvel. Who was also in, got older and was in WandaVision. Yeah. 
And in WandaVision, they talked a lot about how Monica Rambeau has some issues against Captain Marvel, which they'll go into in the Marvels movie. But also, in between now and the release of the movie The Marvels, they will be giving a live-action TV show to Kamala Khan, a teenage Muslim woman who also becomes Miss Marvel. And uh, you see her a lot using her power where she can stretch her arms out and beat people yeah. up. And so she's also a Miss Marvel. So the next Captain Marvel movie will feature all three of those Captain Marvels, which is why it's called the Mark. Yeah. It just it just seems like like that's that's starting to squeeze Brie Larson out. And I know she's had some troubles fitting into the Marvel Universe for some reason. Well, the way that I see it is um, a lot of people are doing Brie Larson the same way that they did the female Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. Where it's like, I want to see a superhero movie. But a superhero movie starting a, starring a girl? The feminists are taking over. I'm an adult virgin. I'm an adult virgin. It's not one of my favorite Marvel movies. Not quite sure where where it lands, but I find it very entertaining. I find her pretty entertaining in it. I don't like the whole other all oh, I'm glowy kind of thing. Yeah. You know, like uh, I, 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 I'm not a huge fan of some of the effects, basically. Uh, I think the story... I think the story fits the times better, but I, I hope it doesn't stop from doing other scroll stories. Yeah. I can accept I... scroll good guys and scroll bad guys. I could totally I... do that. I uh -huh. hate, I hate Annette Bening. And Yay, what? I, I hate Annette Bening in that movie. I, I I I haven't really seen Annette Bening that I wouldn't have preferred somebody else. And I and I'm weirded out at the fact that they de-aged Samuel L. Jackson, but. Big fan of everything that Jude Law does in that movie. Yeah. Love Jude Law as the good guy who's secretly a bad guy who's a really great bad guy. <laughs> and I really love Brie Larson in that film. I fucking love her in that. It's just rewatchable and it's fun. And it's, it's very rewatchable. Love that movie. You know, I, I, I almost have to put beating up an old woman with, on the same level with having a monkey in a movie. Yeah. yeah. You beat up an old woman in a movie, like, automatic points. two points. Yeah. You know? Some points for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think it gets the credit it deserves. The way I see it is that if you don't like Birds of Prey and you don't like... Captain Marvel, then I'm just going to assume that you're scared of vagina. <laughs> I, uh... uh now, this is no critique of the movie. This is just how I am. You know, if I'm watching something at a certain time, it's like a 75% chance this is going to happen. So it's no judgment on the movie. But I got through about half of Bird of Prey, and I fell asleep, and I, I have never revisited it for some reason. I, I, I don't necessarily know why. I, I, I love Harley Quinn. Yeah. And I was liking the movie. I just haven't revisited it for some reason. It's fun. Oh, and yeah. I'm also just, like, just personally, I'm trying to get away. It seems to me people have a concept 
that liking something and something being good are the same thing. Yeah. I understand. And I disliking that. something means that something's bad. And that's not true. Yeah. You know, it doesn't... It, my like or dislike of something says nothing about the goodness or badness of a thing. Yeah. I am not a fan of fuzzy ballerina paintings. How dare you? You know, does not mean fuzzy ballerina paintings are bad. You okay. know? Now, if it was a fuzzy zombie ballerina dancing, maybe I can get a little buy-in. Okay, maybe. You know? But that doesn't mean that it's bad. If I like something, it doesn't mean that it's good. Yeah. You know? And, and... I'm trying to just get really away from that concept. You know? I, I understand that. I mean... I can accept that Picasso is good. I don't like it. <laughs> you know? <coughs> Except, Andy Warhol is an asshole. Uh, agreed. That's yeah. a little different. Uh, but I think I, we have everything kind of covered that's coming up. Yeah. I mean, it's Spider-Man, then it's, it's Mountain of Madness, or... Whatever, um, Doctor the Strange. Eternals. The Eternals. The Eternals is that. The Eternals, and then uh, uh, Multiverse of Madness, I believe. Yeah. So, what's on Shap? Uh, we will be discussing a war that a lot of people don't know about, but it's an important war, and finally the truth is going to come out. And there's a shocking Shyamalan right at the end. A shocking one. And I have pictures that I sent you. You got the pictures? I got the pictures. You're gonna have to cue me, man. I will cue you. I will cue you. I've got A, B, C, and D all lined up. Okay. Yeah. So, Pretty sure I have them in the right order. Okay, I mark them on the chat when they come. So, yeah, no, don't worry about that. I got you. All right. So then let's get on over there. Yes. So until next week, yeah. self-adhesive tape, yes please. I love that. And cut, I'm really trying to get some spin on that. Yeah. And cut on that. And.